Good morning, guys. Travis Breeding here, autistic author and neurodivergent self-advocate. Uh, I wanted to talk about a few things autism related this morning. Um, I'm level one autism and have Asperger's syndrome. Um, but unfortunately, I don't, I wasn't diagnosed until I was 22. So I don't qualify for applied behavior analysis services per se. Um, and I don't have ABA therapy. Um, so the challenge is, um, is actually in, in the fact that um, my primary source of care, let's talk about my budget. So I get adult services through the state of Indiana. My budget is $126,000 per year um, for self, for taking care of me. Um, and so of that 126,000, 102,000 of that goes to residential rehabilitation because I live in a Medicaid waiver home. And the problem with that is um, residential rehabilitation is primarily done by direct support workers who do not have this training or skill set of a BCBA. Um, and so when I think about this, imagine, okay, BCBAs are very knowledgeable about social behavior. So they are very well trained to work with someone across the spectrum on all levels of autism, level one, level two, level three. BCBAs can work with someone at level one autism on social skills and social development and social behaviors. Um, a DSP is probably more likely to be trained on level three autism and not have the training or the skill set in order to dive into um, working with someone on higher order social behavior. Um, they're going to be more focused on like, um, daily adaptive living skills, like cooking classes or budgeting or, um, just things like that that are lower functioning than where I'm at. Um, and the problem is because I get 24 seven services, 24 uh, seven residential rehabilitation, I have a DSP 24 seven. I see a behavioral consultant two hours a week. Um, so the primary source of my care is coming from a DSP a direct support worker who, um, does not have the training or the skill set and applied behavior analysis to be able to um, intervene on some of those social behavior issues. Um, and so the challenge becomes then I am left being as high functioning as I am, having a special interest in ABA therapy myself, I get stimulated by social behavior conversation. Um, so like if we can't talk about contingencies of reinforcement, um, schedules of reinforcement, uh, context being king, um, generalizing and applying social skills, you're going to lose me if we don't talk about that stuff at my level, um, where I'm at. And, um, DSPs just aren't trained to be able to do that. Um, and so like I have to generalize and apply down to become lower functioning when I'm with my DSP direct support workers, um, because like they're not trained in Asperger's syndrome, they're trained in level three autism. Um, so I have to generalize and apply down to become lower functioning, right. To work with them or to be with them or just hang out with them. Um, and the problem is since I, they are coming to my home, right. And they, they're there 24 seven, um, which I don't have a problem with. It's nice to have support staff, but I'm left generalizing and applying down 24 hours a day, seven days a week, basically pretending to have level three autism instead of having level one autism, um, which I really have, um, because I have to generalize and apply down to be at their level and work with them at their level. Now let's talk about something. Um, so yeah, it's hard to go. I have to mask my autism and pretend to have level three autism just to come into my own home and be in my own home. So when I'm sleeping, when I'm eating, when I'm showering, when I'm bathing and whatever I'm doing, I have to mask to become lower functioning and pretend to have level three autism because that's what the training level is of the staff that I have at that given moment and point in time. Um, and so it's, ma it's creating a masking situation in which you have to mask who you are and that's exhausting and painful and overwhelming to someone with autism after a while. You can do it for a little bit, but it gets tiring. So like right now I left my group home, left my Medicaid waiver home. I came back to my parents' house where I don't have to mask because um, the staffing, I'm not trying to work with anybody um, or anything like that. And I can just be who I am at home. Um, and so now here's the problem that I run into. I'm at a very high level of social behavior. Um, so I'm at a very high level of studying ABA and social behavior. And I know what's out there. Um, so I study Peter Gerhardt on YouTube 50 hours a week. All this in the ABA podcast. I follow Ryan O'Donnell. I follow everybody out there in the field just putting out, disseminating the science of ABA. Um, so the cool thing about BCBAs is they're always out there trying to expand their scope of practice. So the, night, the reason why I like to interact with BCBAs is because they're already at a higher level socially than I am, but they're also climbing and they're still trying to get higher and higher. They're trying to expand that scope of practice to get higher and higher level order social behavior. Understood and explained and disseminated. Um, and so like they're growing as to where, you know, they're, they're, well, let's back up a little bit. So BCBAs are actually reinforced by professional development and continuing education and, um, and, um, 
basically expanding their scope of practice. They're reinforced by that because you get ACE, you get continuing education credits, you get your, you also get access to more opportunities to work with someone and help someone when you expand your scope of practice. So there's lots of ways, which eventually leads to more income, more money for the BCBA. So that's positive reinforcement. Um, so there's lots of ways that a BCBA gains positive reinforcement by expanding their scope of practice and growing their education. Um, what? What positive reinforcement does a frontline worker, direct support worker receive for continuing education or expanding their scope of practice? Guys, we don't see DSPs out there doing podcasts, um, but we see BCBAs out there doing podcasts. Why is that? Like, I want to understand why that is. Why are BCBAs out there doing podcasts, disseminating the science of applied behavior analysis as to where DSP workers aren't out there doing podcasts and sharing their, extent, their, their stories um, and things like that? Um, so there's this disconnect here between, um, DSP to BCBA. Um, and it's a very wide gap in a skill set, and that creates a challenge in working, um, with someone on the autism spectrum. Um, when you have a child with autism who is five years old, whose primary level of care comes from a BCBA RBT relationship and, um, you know, and then you have a adult with autism, say, who didn't get diagnosed until they were 22, um, looking for the same level of care that that five-year-old is getting, right? Um, but they're unable to get that because their primary source of care is coming from the direct support worker who is not an RBT or a BCBA. And that's creating some challenging situations for us in the field of autism right now for adult services. Um, because you've got like, you know, you've got like um, BCBAs out there disseminating the science and they're out there um, doing podcasting. And um, I mean, for crying out loud, you've got like so many podcasts out there about beha from behavior analysts now, BCBAs. Um, it's ridiculous. And there's nothing out there like that for DSPs or direct support workers and, and things like that. So what incentive do DSPs get to continuing education? Well, they don't get any incentive because the problem is it doesn't require an education to be a DSP. I mean, it requires a high school diploma. Um, which isn't education. Um, it isn't perfect or what's the word I'm looking at? It's not um, post. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It's not a college education um, at all. It's not a post-secondary education. Um, yeah. So the challenge becomes how do we support individuals with autism spectrum disorder who are adults who have an intense level of need um, with frontline DSP workers, direct support workers who don't have the skill set and the knowledge gap um, the knowledge repertoire to be able to support um, autistic adults in their daily lives. Um, and in fact, you know, you could sit there and you could say like, um, like you could try and get like a DSP to listen to an ABA podcast, but they wouldn't understand it. Like they wouldn't understand um, what was going on. They wouldn't understand what was being disseminated. Um, they wouldn't understand the nuances of, you know, the, um, the actual podcast itself. Um, and so, yeah, so we have this gap here where you have this individual thought. So what happens to me, I had a meltdown yesterday because on Friday I went to Michigan and spoke to some awesome BCBAs about autism and how I view behavior analysis. And we nerded out, guys, we nerded out for an hour and a half on social behavior. And it was great, fantastic. And I felt connected. I felt like I was Travis. I felt like I was level one autism. I felt like I was who I am. Um, but then we came back I came back home Friday night and immediately had to put a mask on to walk in my door and get into my house. And I had to pretend to be lower functioning um, and not talk about social behavior at the level that I needed to talk about it at because no one was going to be able to stimulate me at that level um, in, my, in my Medicaid waiver home. Um, and so the challenge for me is not only, there's two facets for me. The first one is, yeah, I'm autistic and I struggle with social behavior, so I just need to be... Um, I need to be stimulated by a BCBA who gets me and understands how to work with me. Um, the second facet of what's going on for me is ABA and social behavior has become my special interest. And because of that, I have to be stimulated at that level 24-7. Um, like, guys, I didn't even watch the Super Bowl the other night. Like, Sunday night, I didn't even watch the Super Bowl because I couldn't stop obsessing over contingencies of reinforcement, schedules of reinforcement, um, uh, whatever you want to think about, generalizing and applying social skills, intermittent reinforcement, um, intermittent reinforcement, um, all of the above just runs through my head all day long, all day long. 
and I'm left to generalize and apply that with the DSP who has no training in social behavior, no training in applied behavior analysis, and no skill set to be able to stimulate me at the level that I need stimulated at. And this is creating some barriers to uh, my growth as an autistic person, and it's causing me to mask all the time, and masking is just becoming so unhealthy for me mentally. Um, I don't know how to get, th I don't know how to get through this anymore. Um, and so, but yeah, so the gap is, and the problem is, we've got BCBAs out here disseminating the science of ABA, expanding their scope of practice, doing podcasting, doing all of this cool stuff, um, but the government is not keeping up with what is being disseminated, and the government is way behind um, what's being disseminated and what's out there for autistic adults. Um, and so we really need to have this conversation about how we, how do we engage the government in the conversation about behavior analysis and get the government on, involved in helping disseminate the science of behavior analysis to improve the lives of autistic people. Because guys, as taxpayers, we don't want to spend $100,000 a year paying someone like me for to have residential habilitation um, because like, I'm just not that, I'm higher functioning than that. We, we pay for residential habilitation for me because we haven't supported me at the social level that I'm at and we haven't supported me um, and I'm maintaining employment because we haven't supported me at the social level that I'm at and I'm unable to make income enough to be able to get my own apartment or get my own house. So the reason why I'm in residential services is because I don't have income to live on my own. Um, and so um, it's just a poor use of taxpayer funding if we're not gonna keep up, like having prim the primary source of care for someone with level one autism, being a DSP direct support worker, instead of a BCBA and RBT relationship is a poor use of taxpayer funding. And that's something that we need to look into and address. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something and subscribe to my page and learn more about autism and ABA therapy.